Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another broadcast. Today is Saturday. Are you ready to get engaged? My name is Laura and welcome to another video. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And if it's not your first time here, I really appreciate it still. <laughs> I'd like to welcome my two guests here today. Randy Thompson. Hi, Randy. Randy has been coaching and certifying riding instructors for over 25 years, and she's a horse industry legal consultant and expert witness and the founder of Jumping Instructors Live and Jumping Instructors Network. Thanks for being here, Randy. I appreciate it. And we also have Patty Downing Nygaard. Hello. Patty. That's me down here. Down there. Patty is a U.S. <clears throat> Pardon me. Patty is a USEF large R judge and has judged at some of the most prestigious shows in North America, including West Palm Beach, Sonoma Horse Park, Pebble Beach, Devon, Harrisburg, Marshall Sterling Finals, Hits Ocala, West Coast Pony Finals. Thank you, Patty, for being here. I appreciate it. What's the weather Glad like on here. the mountain today? On my mountain, it can't decide if it wants to be cloudy or sunny. However, at this moment, it's overcast and warm and nice. And uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. I just know it. But, uh, and Randy, tell us about your background there. Randy's got a, a background on her, and that's the view from her house. That's the view from my house. If I took the wall down, that's what you'd see. It's so today, pretty. It, yeah. Is it raining there? or what? What's it like there today, Randy, on your side of the mountain? I haven't noticed the rain yet, but I'm sure Patty will send it our way. I'll try really hard. Say, oh, I'm thinking of those potatoes yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, is me. I'm Laura. I'm an Equestrian Canada senior judge, hunter, jumper, equitation, and hack, and a senior steward and a competition coach specialist, high performance train. Now, if you have any questions, please ask them in the put it in the comments. We'll try to answer them the best we can. And today we're going to do position reviews on some photographs that you sent in. So if you know anybody who should be here or watching us, then please send them our way. We'd love to hear from you and see you. And if you have comments or questions, we answer them right here as best we can, right? We try hard. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So you ready? Ready to giddy up? Let's do it. Okay. So we're going to look at our first person here. This is our first person. <coughs> Pardon me. It's a little tiny person on that horse. Little tiny person on a nice big horsey. That's jumping well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Randy, you want to start? Want me to start? Laura, you want to start? Oh, I think that, uh, yeah, sure. Well, you go first. Okay, Patty, so go first. I'm going to go first. Yeah. Hey, why don't I'm you gonna... go first, Patty? I'll Patty, go, go first. first. Okay, so, Patty, go first. so this picture pops up, and the first thing I think of is what a cute jumper. And it's got a, its ears up. It looks happy. And then I see a pretty solid rider that's just a little behind and I'd like to see her open up her chest a little bit. We see this a lot and um, just have a little bit more distance between her chest and the crest. I like her release. She's following through and it would just be a little bit better release. And I'd like to see her lower leg maybe a bit more forward. However, and on the inside of the calf, um, looks like it might have left a little long. It's funny it's you should say that because when she, when she sent this to me, she, Oh, I got an echo. Uh, she said um, that it was from a video, so it's kind of stretched out. It's kind of yeah. stretched out, she said, but all those things are still going to happen. Right, no exactly. Stretched out or not. So, exactly. And she's not in the horse's way. And that's the biggest thing is to not be in your horse's way when it jumps. However, if something doesn't go quite right, if you're not in the proper position, then you will be in the way. So it's like being prepared to be in the right position. Um, 
and be ready for something to not be quite right. She looks to me like she might be hugging with the back of her calf the more I look at it instead of the inside of her calf. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. She might be hanging on that way a little bit. Um, again, I like her release. Um, and I think that's it. And I would think that's an exercise of riding without stirrups, practicing in two point. At her level, maybe jumping in two point, um, just staying in two point, making yourself stay in position like through a grid or a good gymnastic and just really working on that position. Yeah, I agree totally with that. Lots of things you like about this photograph too, right? I love uh, it. Yeah. You, it looks you know, like she's, she enjoys the horse. She trusts the horse. She's comfortable with it, what it's doing. And she's looking up. I mean, she's, it's yeah. not, it's good. Looking up, back and, is flat. And we're just going to, you know, because that's what we do. We know, noticed right away, we can see she's just not in her lower leg like a rider of this level is capable of doing. Because she looks yes. like she can hold her position. You know, she's been training where she's been working on her position. I'd say she might even be working a little bit with training horses. But at this level of riding with a rider like this, I would expect her to be able to practice more on being able to keep her weight down into her ankles to solidify that position. And, and on the in, inside of her calf. Yeah, yep. the inside of her calf. She's yep. And, and that can be so... In, instructors that are listening to this it, it's uh when you teach the same person over and over again sometimes we get tired of saying the same things over and over, over, and over. again. So, so it's possible that she's been told not to do that however at this point she's still doing it so let's get that and just I right on the inside of your calf and the inside of your thigh and i find and, the uh, position is very common with riders who are taught to use the prince of whale spurs because it teaches them to use their heel instead of the inside, usually the upper inside of the calf muscle. So, you know, as I look at this, you can see she's clearly using her heel. Yeah. Not, you can see that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's totally. what's causing her leg to turn out. And of course, as a result, her knee will turn out, blah, 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 blah. Yep. So, I mean, I, one of the things, I mean, as a, as a judge that looking up is, important heels down is important but the other thing that you you kind of look for is that straight line shoulder knee toe and if you she's patty you said she was kind of behind the motion yeah she looks to me like her her hip is back a little too far almost and her lower legs back Back. Um, it's like she's jumped ahead maybe and she's she going jumped. backwards. Yeah. It makes it look to me like she's going backwards, but she would just open her shoulders a little bit yeah, and exactly. let her foot go forward a little bit. That straight line would be there. And that line's always there. And she would look more like be. following the movement. Exactly. Exactly. What a cute lot. horse. Like four inches. Yeah. What a cute horse. Mm -hmm. Cute rider too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Cute. If you took the horse yep. away. Well, as Randy says, if you put her on the ground, yeah, she'd fall over. Yeah, yep. that, that's that's one of the things. And that goes back to this straight line too, right? If you exactly. took the horse. Because so she'd be standing put, on her toes. So she she'd be putting her hands forward. out to, so she wouldn't fall, really. Uh, I like uh, you. Th but like, as you say, bring your shoulders back and then. Lower, lower leg, leg forward, forward like and that. inside of her calf instead of inside the of her calf back. Yeah. And that would help open up the, her elbow angle as well. So uh, the, all those things are kind of like a domino effect, right? It's exactly. just once you fix one thing, it kind of, everything kind of shifts, shifts back together so that they ride better and better balance. So if you, if, so if this, rider came to, to me for a lesson i think i would set up uh some trot rails on the ground and make this person do like a two-point or standing up in the stirrups weight down in her heels to push that heel down and forward stretch the back of your leg down and keep the calf on the horse the inside part of the calf on the horse and the so inside that, of her thigh now she doesn't her leg is about as big as my forearm so she doesn't have a lot of leg she's well I mean, she's very slender and, um, but she's, I mean, she's all muscle. She ought to be able to get that leg where it's supposed to go. 
And yeah. I would kind of do the same thing. I would probably put her in two point and let her go through um, on, on a good old school horse and go through gymnastics and just hold her position, put her yeah. position exactly where it is and put, get her on the inside of her calf and just work on staying still and being in a position, just going back a few steps and just reliving those when you first learned how to do it. Sometimes we forget the basics and the, why we do what we do. And continuing on with the trot rails, uh, small Cavaletti, just getting that muscle memory back, as you say, or developing the muscle memory to keep their legs from slipping back, keeping the straight line forward and not moving your upper body, just keeping it still. It's keeping everything still and quiet so that they don't get there. You know, what was one of the things that we, that was a good kind of rule of thumb is you should be able to put a helmet a riding helmet between your chest and the horse's neck. Yeah. So that's, Just so there's a gap there. There should be a gap there. And something that you say, Patty, that uh, I've started to develop is let the horse come up to meet you. Don't you yeah, go down the and horse, meet the horse. Exactly. Cause when the horse jumps, they raise an arc up. And if you lean down it's coming up and that's why you end up on the neck too. So if you can let that horse jump up to you and let it do all the work, because that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's good. That's a really good one. I mean, and, and most of these, uh, people that we've seen are doing the same things are doing the same exercises will help a multitude of things that we're seeing here. Right. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And you get caught up in sometimes riders and trainers can get caught up in, you have a kid with talent or an adult with talent, a rider with talent, and they've got a great eye and they stay balanced basically. And they want to do more and more and more. And as a trainer, it's actually easier to keep doing more than to work hard on a certain getting level yes, and getting to where you can do it. more better and be better. So it, as an instructor, it is part of our job to keep them entertained and focused and make it a little difficult. But you can do jumps at two feet and set it up where it's difficult. And yeah, the rider yeah. has to do it. And it doesn't kill the horse to jump higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Do you think this person could be jumping without stirrups? Would that be an exercise that you would include in your I program? Don't think, I would not do that at this point. I might have them ride without stirrups, but because she wants to grab a hold of the back of her calf so bad, it, I'm afraid she would continue doing that without stirrups. I think yeah, I would yeah. do without hands in two point position and get her to get strong in the base and then maybe take the stirrups away. Balance over top of her leg a little bit better. Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Yeah. That's good. Cute, cute. So she's in Florida, I think. Is she in Florida? Uh, I don't know. And this I is up a time I saw palm trees, maybe California. California. I'm going to bring up another training exercise as we're going to the next rider, and that is most people have a 55-gallon barrel around their home or they can find when they're like 4 or $5, the plastic ones they have now. If you can get one of those and you set it on the ground and put boards on each side so it doesn't roll, especially with the riders with shorter legs, you can put them on the barrel with a saddle and they can practice their positions on the saddle. And what it does is it teaches them that the secret to their success, their riding position, is keeping anchored in their foot. Because when they're standing over the barrel, the only way they can go up into two-point position is if they put their weight in their feet. Mm. And so the riders that are used to standing on their toes are jamming their heels way back in. They aren't sure how to even rise the trot on a, when they're on a barrel because they've created this artificial system of dealing with whatever's happening to their body, right? Yep. Yeah, That's it a becomes a habit, right? And then, uh, yep. you know, the, then the like the instructor's eye just kind of goes over. Oh, that's what she always does. And instead of backing up the bus and unpacking it and dealing with it, they just say, "Hey." And we all have those habits. Exactly. What a cute yeah. trot. Yeah. So uh, this is another. Um, 
somebody asked if I would do a flat position. I said, sure. So it um, looks like it's had a little bit of a horse show and nice trot here. I think it's got a Kimberwick in there. Yes, it looks like it. So. Is that a dressage saddle? I think yes. it is. That is a dressage saddle. Okay, so Randy, you take this one over. I don't know what yeah. she's trying to do. Well, I don't. The same basic position. It's the same thing as we're seeing in the hunter riders. And if you, as you look at this rider, first you can see she's a little tense because she's at a horse show. You can see a little bit of tension in her it body. Looks kind of cold too. Like the, you can see the breath coming out of the horse. So and the jacket you know, and, the, and the jacket right. and everything. So she's probably cold and nervous. Yeah. So uh, even though the saddle appears on the top to look like it fits her, when I look at her lower leg, I'm curious of whether she's, you know, that stirrup leather should go straight up and down on the English saddles. And my feeling here is that she has pushed that stirrup leather forward because she's putting her weight on the front of her foot, but towards the back of the ball and pushing, pushing there. That's where she's bracing. You can see she's bracing up into her knee, which is pushing her into the back of the saddle. Oh, okay. So she's in the back of the saddle here and she's pushing down into the stirrup, which is making her go to the back of the saddle. That's right. Which, and as okay. a result of her seat going back and her legs going forward, it's almost like a modified, and this is, she's a nice rider. This is a nice rider. We're just getting picky about things she can do, you know, to make it to the next level is that her hands have slid back as a result of her seat sliding back in the saddle. Okay. So for somebody like so, this, her hand should be two inches, four inches above and in front of the withers at all times. So when you see a rider coming like back, here. yep, if you see a rider coming back with their hand to the saddle like this, it's usually because their seat has slid to the back of the saddle, not that the reins have gotten longer. Their seat has slid back. And that's where with a rider at this level, she needs to just get her horse to step up from her leg up into the reins and the horse will pick her seat up differently and it'll bring her hands forward at the same time. Because this rider can do that. Just looking at how nicely this horse is going forward and how disciplined this rider appears in her riding position. I would okay. want to step up more to take up the connection. And she again looks to me like she's riding on the back of her calf yep. and her heel yep. is, is pushing into the rib cage. Yes. Um, I'm not sure what, I wonder what she's getting ready to do with a Kimberwick in its mouth. And maybe she's just hacking around um, at a horse show. Yeah, she's got a number on her. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Must be a schooling show. Yeah, I would something. think it would anyway. be a schooling show. And um, if she's got a Kimberwick in, I don't know that that would be a dressage show because... And she has a square saddle pad on, so yeah, which thinks that it would be a dressage show but it's green, or a jumper. But it's got to be schooling. Oh, but it's green, yeah, right. So it's got to be a schooling and it's show. A dressage saddle, but it's yeah. it doesn't matter. Nice horse, she's riding him nicely. Look at how nice she's. Like you said, the first thing you noticed was how nice the horse is moving, which is a sign that her position is effective enough to take her to the next level. You know, it's funny, we see riders that are able to put a horse together like this and we can still critique what they're doing, but we're also able to see, wow, can you imagine what can happen if they can just get themselves in alignment and get that horse to step up? You know, it's like the, first the rider has to get connected and then you get the horse to step up from underneath and pick up their seat. And that's when they both connect together and move at a different level. And that's where this rider, to me, is headed towards. She's going to a more advanced level of a riding. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, so I'm and just I think you're right. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I would just want to know about the 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 hand position. Like Randy, we all want our hands to be here, right? Ish. Yes. Uh, in that area, uh, in kind of over top of and then slightly in front of the withers. But I'm just wondering if this rider's confirmation will allow her to do that. And I think so. If she get her hip so, forward, but. Yeah. If I'm a short it, person and I can do it. But She's it's taller than me. But you can see that if her hands are here down, so we would like to have her hands this way. That's right. Oh, wait you a see minute. Her, but if she's there because her hips too far back. 
Yep. So, so she'd slide her hip, her hip forward. too far back. It's okay. uh, almost looks like, like you say, Randy, like she's pushing on the stirrup and there's something like there's some air coming up between her and the saddle. Like she's pushing onto her stirrup, which is what's, exactly what's what she said. Because of where she is in the back of the saddle and where her yeah. elbows are and everything is her hips are not coming through her, her elbows and she's in a dressage saddle. So that's easy to feel. She cannot bring her hips to the elbows in this position, which means she cannot follow the horse's movement at the level we would expect of a rider like this. Let me rephrase that again. Yeah, so... Uh, I will put her in a neck strap so that she can learn where to keep her hands. Well, I should say it's more than the hands because we it's know... It's not the hands. I think it comes from feet. deeper than that, right? I think it's, it's like feet. you so her that, foot. No, it's the seat. Well, with her, it's the foot, but we have to, what the next step exactly. does is it pulls them deeper into their thigh, into their lower leg, but it teaches them when the neck strap gets tight that it's their seat that's falling back. And that's when they need to adjust, you know, center themselves, half halt, we call it in a dressage. So you just rebalance yourself when you feel yourself getting to this point. So uh, what do you think about her stirrup length? Do you think her stirrup length is the correct length for her? Well, it's dressage. So if I'm it's a, a, if it's a dressage point. saddle, I would think it's fine. If it was okay. a in a different saddle and she had that length, I'd want her to shorten up. Yeah, a little bit, I but it's hard. To, I can't quite figure out what the plan is here. What her so, plan is, like what what she's warming up for, what she's doing. Right. I right. think she's doing a hat class. I think, uh, you know, as far as the, the position that you show. go, look, yeah, it looks like she's in balance. Her seat slipped back and that's that straight line again. Now she's in three point position. We want a straight line, ear, shoulder, hip and heel. Yeah. She's falling onto her crotch in this one. Up on her pelvis a little Oops. bit. Yeah. But the straight yeah. line, the straight line, she misses. Yep. Her hip would go forward a little bit. She's not far off. It's just no. a little bit. And it, she's trotting, too. It could be just how she's coming down in the saddle or pushing up. Maybe she's or, doing a rising trot. Well, yeah, then that's so. something that she can work on, and that's why she sent the photo there. She's falling. Exactly. If it's the rising Cute trot, she's falling back in the saddle instead of staying above her seat bones, above her lower leg, which is yeah. very common. There's nothing uncommon about this. We just expect more riders that of this level. So her, uh, her hands could be softer. She kept them out in front of her. I love the way that she's looking where she's going, uh, you know. I like her yeah. back. I mean, there's lots of good things here. There's lots of and good things happening. And, and the horse certainly looks relaxed and is, appears to be going forward. Uh, maybe go forward a little bit more there, you know. But, um, yeah. That's pretty cute. Now, mm -hmm. if this rider came to me, I think one of the things that I would work on with this rider was be to, as Randy says, I like the tool that you say, Randy, using the neck strap. I would certainly pull it, put a neck strap on this rider and do exercises on the lunge line to help get her seat deeper into the correct part of the saddle and work without stirrups so that she uses her legs properly because she's turning her toes out and getting her legs in this way. So just rolling the thigh in and the cat and the lower leg in where you're riding on the inside of your thigh to the front of your thigh. And then the inside of your calf would solve a lot of issues. Um, right. And realize and, she doesn't have to have her leg on that far down. She's got her whole leg wrapped around the horse. And I'll bet her leg doesn't come up. I'll bet her inside calf muscle comes up to about where the saddle blanket is. Right. So what right. she's done is she's twisted her leg because everybody tells you, put your leg on. What does that mean? So what most riders do is they try to wrap their entire lower leg around a horse. And the reality is, is, you know, if you look at a horse from the front with a rider on, most of the riders, their leg physically does not touch the horse very far below the calf. You know, the right. bulge of the calf. So anything mm -hmm. that goes below that is an artificial leg position. Which changes when we're jumping, you know, like when jumping, we'll hug more and stuff. But when we're on the yeah. flat doing that type of thing, it should just be like a feather. You've all read it. It should be like a feather on the horse's side. It should be breathing with the horse, right? This yeah. is not breathing with the horse. And I, I think this is the up part of a posting diagonal, which also would make a difference. But in that case, you know, it's the same same thing. We're still working, looking at the same thing. Right. Yeah, because her, if she's on the left diagonal, she would be probably up. coming Just up. Just coming, starting to come down. And if you took the horse away from her, she'd fall on her rear end. 
exactly right. That is that to me is the the uh, the best way to see if the rider is in balance on the horse. If you took the horse away, where's that rider going to be? Yeah, she's exactly going to be sitting right. on the ground. Exactly. Yeah, she'd be holding on the horse's mouth. Now I'm wondering if she's got to use her leg that much. Why she's got the pelham in or uh, the Kimberwick in? It could just be what those what the bad the style. Is. The yeah. style at that, you know, a lot of people just follow what everybody else is doing. Looks like a lovely horse. It'd be a nice horse to take home. Pretty yeah. cute horse. I think it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Or she, whatever it is. Can't really tell. I think um, I, I, well, I am not. A, I, I use a Kimberwick for one of my ponies when I drive them. And yeah. I yeah. never realized I used to use a Kimberwick on some of my lesson horses. I never realized what a strong bit that can be until I put it on my driving pony that was ripping my arms off yeah. and then it wouldn't touch my hands. Mm -hmm. So Kimberwicks are to me, one of the strongest bridles bits you can use. And so one should be very careful with them is my humble opinion from my personal use of them. And we don't love them in the hunters, the equitation it's fine. And, um, yeah, so that's yeah. That, that's a good comment, uh, Patty. So if you're judging and a and a horse comes in with a Kimberwick in its mouth, uh, what's your? It tells your, me it's it tells me it's strong and it's needs I mean, to it's have one a thing lot of if it's in, a, it's in it's one thing if it's a short stirrup or a novice or something like that, but right. But in a regular class, it tells me that that horse is very strong and. Uh, it, it, the slotted Kimberwicks, the ones that yep. you can put the reins on, they, they are illegal them. because it becomes a fixed rein. So if you have a slotted Kimberwick, you need to put that rein not in a slot, but around the D um, in a hunter show and, sure. and and in the equitation too, not, uh, not in the jumpers, obviously, but um, the um, it, it, it's a very strong bit. And it's a, and it has its place and there's people that use it. And the one I used was a broken one. So it's like a snaffle mouthpiece yeah, yeah. and it's still a very strong bit. And that being, being fixed and it's, um, it's quite powerful. So you have to have a nice, good hands, yeah, really nice good hands to use it well. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay, Miss Laura. Now, if that person came to you for a riding lesson, <clears throat> Patty, what would you tell this person to do? What would what were some of the exercises? I'd go back to the two point. I, I we I sent like when people are doubt. watching this day in and day go out when we point. do this. Yeah, go into the two point and get that thigh and leg rolled around to the front, or not the front, but the inside. And, yeah. and and you could, could even forward. physically could even physically uh, grab that muscle, and that's where your magic button exercise comes in, Randy. Right? Or, and to to just physically pull that muscle, that big yeah, thigh muscle reach from behind. Reach from behind yeah. your leg, and you can pull that muscle back. You can also pull your leg forward on the saddle and slide it back, or. With this exercise, you'd want to bring your leg back and back. slide forward, and it'll yeah. also roll your thigh to the inside. That is your riding muscle for your thigh, by the way. Most people don't understand that. Unless you have a fat thigh, your lower leg will not go in the right place. Exactly. It's kind of a fix. If you can pull that thigh muscle back, it lays everything where it needs to go. Then it's your job to hold it there. Um, the other thing to remember is when you're teaching if you're going to touch someone's leg or do something to ask their permission or tell them that you're going to do that because you don't want to just grab, reach up now in this day and age and grab someone's leg. That's right. Yeah, well, It's something simple. Is it okay if I touch you? And particularly if it's a junior rider, you know, make sure the parents know you're going to touch the child as well. Really and I will say, um, do you mind if I touch you? And then at the same time, I'll say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to roll your, I'm going to reach underneath of your thigh and yeah. I'm going to slide it back. Tell them right. what you're going to do. Yeah, that's important. It, it is important. important. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay, so we'll go on to the next one. Uh, let's see. 
So even with this rider, you know, I started using the barrels when I was doing certification programs and we ran out of, we didn't have enough horses to practice riding positions on. So I was at a barn in New York and this Olympic guy, he had won the, the luge or something in the Olympics. We ran out of things. He said, well, why don't you try barrels? And I laughed. I thought he was silly. And then they, we ran out of chairs, so I couldn't do anything else. So they brought in this barrel and it changed everything I was doing. Because I like the barrels. We used to hang them too. You can hang them, yeah. and use them too. And you can you know, do all sorts of fun things with them. Just have to make sure you're safe with what you do. Safe. Yeah. And you know, for me, the big aha was realizing that it was all the rider's foot. When I could put a rider of whatever level, even the more advanced riders on a barrel, and for the first time in their life, they realized that they couldn't keep their foot flat when they were rising or, you know, doing the rising trot or the posting trot on the barrel or any two point or anything. They couldn't get up out of the saddle. And that's because they've been using their legs in the wrong way for so long, instead of using the lower leg, you know, the foot for the base of their support, who knows what they were doing. Cause we've all done it. Yeah. I know in Canada exactly. now they've started a new program called the rookie rider program. And that's what they do. They travel across Canada with a barrel. Oh, to, I love it. Yeah. Barrels are amazing because they don't move around. They don't kick. They don't, you know, they don't do anything. And it isolates. They don't them. eat. They don't eat, but it isolates everything in the rider's position. So here we have another picture um, of this person. And lovely. There's lots of things I like about this. I love that her eyes are, it looks like she, her eyes are looking up, looking forward. Um, like to see more weight in her heels here. Her heels look like they're up. And uh, it doesn't look like a really huge jump. So same sort of thing if we've been talking about with uh, everybody else is that we rule of thumb, can you get a helmet between your horse's neck, top of your horse's neck and the chest of the rider? Do you think she they looks fit? I, I don't think so, but I think it's such a simple fix. This such one could be fix. so close to... She just lengthen her leg and her ankle right here, and open her hip a little bit, and yeah. she'd be fine. And open her, her hip to bring her shoulders back. Yeah, if she'd open her hip, her shoulders will come back. So it kind of follows through. She's right there. She's yeah. over. She's over trying. Yes. Um, I mean, and, if this uh, were a four and a half foot oxer, I'd probably be in a really good position. Although we'd like to see more weight come in her heel. Yeah. It looks like a weight yeah, is stopped more, right out of strip. And she's pivoting on here. She's pivoting on her yeah. knee. Because because she's standing on her toe. Yeah. You stand she's on your toe, on you're toe. going to. Yeah. So but um such an easy fix. She's so close to being right in the right place. It's perfect. I love that. And cute little horse and maybe a pony. Um isn't that a lovely, also a lovely um, background? Yeah. Oh, I mean, it looks like a a a calendar picture. It's it gorgeous. Does. And this does, is a great, this picture is a great example of if you look at the stirrup leather, is it going straight up and down? Yeah, exactly. It's not. It's tipped to the back, right? Yes. So yeah. that's a sign that her leg is not, if her leg is in the right position, the stirrup leather will hang straight. There you go. So uh, just to, so I can just draw that here. So the, from, there's the girth and there's the stirrup leather. Pretty much. So we, that, yeah. So you're saying, Randy, that the stirrup leather should be, Parallel to the girth or perpendicular yes. to the ground? Yes, to the ground. Yeah, so it should be more, whoops, that's where it is, and we want it to be more this way. Yes, we should put her leg underneath of her, which would give her the stability to keep her shoulders back and her hip open, as yeah. Patty was saying. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's all kind of connected. Mm -hmm. It's all 100% you know, connected. If you fix one thing, if you fix the spider's leg and ask her to put her heel down and forward. Or to give her a longer leg, put her a little bit more on her thighs. Yeah. And we're being really picky here, whoever you are, but that's what we do. <laughs> I mean, you have a great basic position, but we're yeah. just trying to get you to the next level. This is what you want to change. 
Yeah, so that, that's really good. So if this an intermediate type of rider. It looks like she has, to me, it almost looks as if she's grown taller and her stirrups and, and her body is still doing what it was when she was two or three inches shorter. And now it, you can really see that she's putting the weight on her stirrup. Could if this be. person came to you, what would you get her to do, uh, Randy? Well, it's the same as we would do with everybody. I'd take her right back to the basics. To me, it's a rider where a lot of this can be fixed on just, again, I could put her on a barrel and I could fix this because obviously she would fall off the horse if we took the horse away from her, right? Yeah. She's not balanced over her lower leg. It's such a simple fix, but it's not. So those of you who hear us going over and over with each rider that it's the same thing, it's not. It takes a thousand times to change a ride, any habit. So you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You just start counting. Okay, I have 998 times to get this right yet. <laughs> and you start counting back and just realize it does take time. But once you get it, like a rider of this level, again, we can talk about level. She's an intermediate rider. She has the discipline where when she gets the feel, that's all she's missing. She's got the, the ability. She's got, the, you know, she'll ride anything, right? Yeah. So she hasn't been, been, for whatever reason, the foundation isn't, quite as strong as it could be for a rider of this level where she can stay grounded in the saddle, which would we, we expect from a rider of this level because she's not a beginner. What, uh, Patty, what would you do with this rider? If she came to you for lessons. Well, probably the same thing. I, I first would try just seeing if I could fix it. If I could just say, okay, let's roll your thigh in, let's get your calf where it needs to be. And let's see if we can fix it. And then if, she, and she might just fix it. You never know. Yeah. So say something a little different. And, and then I'd go to, with this one, I think I'd go to lunge line without hands yeah. and keep yeah. working on that leg position and then the two point and just keep working until that leg's in the right place. The whole thing is you can get away without having a good solid leg, but you'll be really good if you have a good solid leg. Right. You can do a good job. And um, so it doesn't mean you can't make it happen. It's just not as good as it could be. That's right. So I think, again, uh, the exercises that I would do with this rider would be, again, go in your two-point, relax your lower leg, put up some trot rails, or even raise the trot rails up to actually accentuate the use of her ankles to keep her weight down into her ankles. And keeping in your two point and even put a, a uh, neck strap or does she have a martingale on there? No. A neck strap or martingale strap so that she can balance and really drop the weight down into her feet and to her heels so that she can keep the weight down past her stirrup and into her heels rather than stopping the weight on her stirrups. Yeah. I mean, I like, I, she's, the horse is happy. She's following through. I mean, there's so many good things good, here. Yeah. It's lots of really good instincts. Really cute jumper too, isn't he? Yeah. He's just fine. Just fine. Okay. So let's see what we got next here. Okay. I think this might be the same horse. Uh, let me get this back. You know, before we do that, uh, stop, 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 stop. Yes. Uh, going to um, stop sharing this. <laughs> and I'm going to share. Oh, I want to go over some comments because some people had some comments uh, from our last week's show. So I just wanted to okay. uh, share comments about whoops, what they said, if we got time. To do that, let's just spend like five minutes on these comments. There we go. Okay, so can you see this? No. No. Oh. Dang. Just I read to us. Okay. What does it? Oh, Kathy Mick. Kathy Mick says, "I grad." Thank you so much, Kathy. Really appreciate you taking the time to make these comments because they are amazing. Kathy Mick, I graduated from University Equine Science Business Writing Program and every third lesson was a jumping lesson. All the other lessons we wrote in a dressage saddles. 
uh, so that we could learn correct balance centered seat. At the beginning, we were required to warm up in a walk and canter doing core seats, biometric exercises. So excellent. Perfect. What is that? Should, okay, Shirley said, should the stirrups be at an angle? I'm guessing an angle on your feet. If so, what to, to what degree? The ball of your foot should be on the stirrup and it should be across the whole ball of your foot. So your stirrup shouldn't be at an angle. Correct, children? Well, it doesn't, oh, so it should be sitting square. The, you're, you're saying it should be square. Well, I'm not sure. I think George Morris has a different idea about that. Not that we like to mention his name, but uh, <laughs> I thought it was um, they wanted a little bit like on the outside pinky toe and then on the ball of your foot. Well, so, but when you do when when you do that, there's a that, tiny bit. Yeah, it kind of goes yeah, there. It's it yeah. should be if, like the ball of your foot. If everybody want me to do a little. Demo where ball of your foot is. Oh, oh <laughs> look. Ball of She's your foot. Yeah, so go across there. So if you go across there, there is a little bit of an angle. There is, but it's very, it's very it's subtle. Very slight. With the stirrup, outside stirrup bar next to your baby toe. Outside part of the stirrup bar next to your baby toe. Uh, somebody sent me an email. Thank you very much. Emily says, I learned so much from your videos and live stream. Keep up the great work. Thank you very uh -huh. much. Emily says, very nice. Looks very professional. Oh, that was on my new new uh, thing. Oh, Kathy Mick again says, Mary Wainless makes a writer, writer's belt that is good teaching aid. So this was in response to, remember last week, Randy, you showed us your shoulder thing? Right. Yep. So this is uh, Mary Wainless makes a rider's belt that's good for teaching aid for showing the rider how to use their body and feel what to do with their body to get into their seat and into their back. It allows you to make the movement with your pelvis and core, your lower back in ways that riders need for half. She has half hearts. I love that half hearts, half halts. I'm guessing is what it should be. And. Uh, what else we got? Sure, it said for me, for me, it feels safer, looks more polished to wear field boots in the Hunter shows. This was in comments, remember last week or two, last week we talked about the half chaps. So for me, I feel safer and looks more polished to wear field boots plus riding daily. I love the classic boot. However, I've seen others wear half chaps and it doesn't look as well put together. So it depends. Uh, Again, you can have half chaps and you can have half chaps. So that picture of me riding um, from a couple of weeks ago, whenever that was on the flat, it, it looks like I have on a pair of beautiful brown leather boots and they are beautiful brown half chaps. You, you, so, some half chaps are just, I mean, they're I amazing, see, but they're yeah. as expensive as they're very as expensive. Boots. Yeah. And some people's yeah. legs, or their ankles, or it, it's easier to put on a pair of good paddock boots. And, and if your half chaps are exactly the same color, there are some half chaps out there that are amazing. Those brown ones have a tab, I think, on the outside. They look like custom made boots. So they, um, unfortunately, the zipper broke. So I don't know how to use it anymore. <laughs> uh, you know. But anyhow, um, but yes, I think field boots fit the best. And now with most boots having zippers up the back, you can get a great custom look from a stock boot where you used to not be able to do that. We yes. have a video. Yeah, I got a little video here. Uh, it's a little blurry because it was very tiny. I, I'll show it to you here, then I'll show it to you the tiny one. But um, t tell me what you think of this rider. Yeah, it's kind of blurry. I think that's the same kid, isn't it? I think it's the same kid. I yeah, think that's right the same there. picture. There's the same picture right there. That's her. Exactly. Exactly. But, but for me, she sits too hard on her seat, and her lower leg goes out in front of her coming through there. And then she gets up in her position, which, again, is why she's laying down so far. Opens up quick. Yeah. 
Um, so, but look at the in, like great instincts. So, right, like yeah, super... good doubt, yeah. And there's a lot of people that couldn't go canter down over those little verticals without ground lines and wings and and I uneven mean, ground, uneven ground. Okay, so she sits up on the approach. Well, almost she's like well, leans back. Almost too far behind the vertical there, isn't she? Yeah, she's definitely too far behind the vertical and she's pulling back hard. Her reins are too long. And I think maybe she's, she's got a bit less bridle in this time. Here. Oh, that could be. Yeah, her horse is taking her instead of waiting for her, which changes her whole position because she doesn't know. There's no connection there to know when either one of them is going to jump. And she likes to jump a little bit before her horse. Well, and she's um, sitting so hard in the seat, well, she's driving yeah. it forward. Yep. There, there at and least she let go of it. Right. And so she's sitting down. And if she could get up in her saddle and keep her leg where it is, she'd be right. in a really yeah. good seat. So light I mean, on her pelvis. Because it's pushed him right down on his forehand before the jump. Right. Yeah. So yeah. this straight line, is she in two point or is she in three point? She's falling out of the back of the saddle. Yeah, she's, she's way she's She's right. Good behind. thing there's a yeah. Good thing there's a cantle on that saddle because she'd be flipping right back to the back. And you know we are being really tough here. We're being you. We're being really tough, right? I mean, well, I think when people and, send it, they want us to be tough. And okay. and we have the ability to stop this frame by frame. You can see that this and this particular frame. It looks like she is way behind the motion of the horse. If we took the horse away, what would happen? She'd fall on her She'd fanny. fall on her behind, right? Right. Okay. So then. Uh, so she needs to, when she wants her. But then look what happens. Okay. Then she starts getting up in the. Okay. And then you see already she's put the weight onto her stirrup. The front of the foot. Right. The front of the foot. And here's and her then right there. That's a good one because that exaggerates everything. Exactly. If she so could, this is, yeah, if she could get her weight in her heel and her leg forward yeah. there, she could just hold that position in okay. the air. Right. And it would be fine. But she jumped a little ahead because she was so far behind. You know, you have to play catch up. It's like if you're going to fall, you overdo to, to catch yourself. So if you're tripping somewhere, you're going to end up going forward a little bit because you're trying to not trip. So she was right, so far right. behind, she tries to catch up. I think she's really pivoting on her knee here. Uh -huh. And her lower leg is gone back and her upper body, like you say, trying to get caught up because two frames beforehand, she was way in the back of the saddle. That must be kind of difficult for the, the horse too, to have that real change in the way the rider's sitting here and then all of a sudden going too far forward so well, that's why that bounce that position works so well if you can get into the right position and, and do as stay, little as possible yeah. with your body and just use your leg and your back and your shoulders and just keep it still just stay and, and stay right there yep Yep, yep. Okay, so then we go a little further. Seeing the same thing, then she's kind of throwing her upper body forward and standing on her toes again, but this is the same picture. Yep. The same look, yeah. Whether and it's if her left side we're seeing, which is most riders' weak side, she's twisting her whole body over to the right. As a result, she's got more weight in her right iron as she jumps than in her left, and that's why her upper body is also twisting to the right. Okay, so look what happens right there. It's just as the horse hits the ground, her heels come down, and the weight shifts from her toe there. The weight is on her toe, and then there the weight has come. Her leg has come away from the horse, and the weight has come down into her stirrup. It's because her leg is swinging. And then she's now the she's holding. Swinging. And now though she's holding. Now she's on holding, and now it's swinging again. Yep. Yeah. So it's just oh, a lot of up. a lot of movement. Looks like the horse is crooked there too, Randy. Now that you mentioned the oh. crookedness, like it looks like he's swinging his quarters to the left. Well, oh, so you have me. the railing, guys. You have the fence. 
And then you have Here's nothing on, yeah, and you have nothing on the left side. So the horse is trying to go to the left. So she's, instead of pushing it to the right with the left side, she's pulling it over there. Uh, and so I think, gotcha. I mean, I think, cause it's like having a shoot one side of a shoot. So she's maybe up. Yeah, cut the corner and yeah, I, yeah. But I, it's so easy to fix. It's just so easy to fix. And so, um, a thousand times, just a thousand times, thousand times, thousand times over and over again. I know. And it's interesting because every rider that we look at, whether they're riding dressage, hunt seat, flat seat, Western, it's all the same basic position things. If a rider's not anchored in their lower leg, they cannot get their upper right in position where it needs to be to be effective. Exactly. So, uh, Randy, if this person came to you, what would you do? Oh, we already talked about what we do because we right. saw her already, we already in the previous her, one. Yeah. Exactly. So, riding a two-point position, keeping their lower leg still over checking her rails. stirrup length. Her stirrups <laughs> might be a shade long. I, Maybe I, a half a hole. Sometimes it's a half a hole, guys. And that's why they make hole punches. Yep. So don't be afraid to punch a hole. If they're yours, don't punch a hole. Else. <laughs> right. Uh oh. Oh, I love this. <laughs> How cute is that? What's wrong what with this? What a good horse. Picture? I know. I you wish have there to was a. Send that to Dara. Can you send that to Dara? I don't know how Randy, to do that. Can you send that to me? But I look, love that if, you took the horse out from him, if you took the horse out from underneath of him, he could still stand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is the saddle thing. what a sweet horse is the saddle fitting properly <laughs> is is the rider fitting properly in the saddle uh, i think it's a little over the saddle <laughs> i think I the rider's leg that. is just fine that's so freaking cute i would love I want to see, that horse i would love to see this so horse and rider jump that jump they might have it may be that'll be next week's but yeah i have to send that to dara because we, we call her the whatever kind of dinosaur t-rex we call her the t-rex she'd love that uh no oh, even with the t-rex's confirmation i noticed that this rider uh has her his her hands directly over top of and in front of the withers she does. Uh, the, whoever the rider is, is rides well because you <laughs> can't put that costume on and still look correct up there. So that's the funniest I thing mean, I've that, ever seen. That, that horse, imagine. That, that horse is a saint. Uh, yeah. With all that, that stuff hanging over top of his. Uh... <laughs> that's Jeez. just so funny. Good I, one, I, Laura. You like that one? I like that one. Okay. This is the we've already seen that one. Okay, we've so let me see what one. else we got here. What else have you got there? I don't think I have too much. I would like to know if you had to this is place these horses in a class. Uh what would be your first, second, third? We have this one, black horse. Oh, we can't. This one, they're not all doing the same thing. I, I, I know it's going to be difficult, isn't it? No, not really. Uh, this, <laughs> this, uh, this rider here. So I would do the black one, then the one in the Kimberwick, and then, no, maybe the black one, then this one, then the one in the Kimberwick. But only because I dislike the Kimberwick, so. You just like I love that right. horse. Yeah, I like that this horse, horse, but it is hard. Yeah, this horse is adorable. They're, yeah, I, and then because they're doing totally different things, it doesn't. It's, it's a little really hard to. It's, it's hard. hard. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think I would do this one. I, I, this is what I do sometimes when I'm judging, and Laura and I judge a lot of those horse shows where you don't really have a winner um because they're learning well they're learning and it's oh, a winner for that day but it's which is worse a knockdown or well three, exactly so three, i'll take i take the who would i have ride my horse right 
I would have this girl ride my horse before the other two. And then I would have the girl on the chestnut jumping. And then I'd have this one. So this because I think the two jumping are softer than the girl on the chestnut with the Kimberwick. And not because of the Kimberwick, but I think she looks behind the motion more and in my humble opinion. And but it's like kind of comparing persimmons to cantaloupe. So um they're all fruits, but okay, so uh let's let me change the, the thing here then. If this were uh would you give this rider an a a plus a minus b plus b b minus a, a score what would you give this rider for a score 77 77 for her Randy, position. what would you give her mm. Well, again, you've just got one shot here, so it's not fair to put a score on just one shot compared to a whole right. trip. So on well, this, this one, is a yeah, I wouldn't give her a 77. I would give her a, from what I've seen in this picture, a 65. 65. Ooh, you're mean. I think, Patty, you're being generous. Well, well 77 is a C, guys. Come on. It's not a... Well, no, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not fair to even ask us to do a score on a standing a picture of a horse. Just that's not, you know, this is hard to do because well, if a hundred percent is perfect, do how perfect is she? I would give her seventy. Oh, you guys are mean. Just saying, seventy's a D. Seventy's not a D. Yes, it is. 70 is good. No, it's a D. I'd give her good. Well, what's good? Well, 10 is excellent. 80. Well, then I'd give her. Well, then I'd 80 give is, So 70 is a D. Uh, 65 is an F. No, so, it's, no not. it's not. Sure. Sure. Might F is the fail. Because I'm doing it the way that, like, when we started. Okay. It, it's so the score the the scores. Yeah. yeah. 10 is excellent. Excellent. Very good. Good. So I'm saying it's good. 10 is excellent. Oh, 9. 10 is. What are the scores? I forget okay. already. It doesn't matter. I would give her 7. 70. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Let's see now. Now that I've got your attention. So I would give this one a 70. 70's Patty. 65. 65 <laughs> for Randy. Okay, and I would give this one a uh, I think I like her what I give the previous one? 70. I would give this one a 60. I'm going with Randy on this one. Oh, I put Randy's name. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Elora. To Laura L. Yeah. yeah. I'm much nicer than you guys. I just am saying that. Oh, we're consistent. Because it's true. <laughs> okay, this writer. So it, it's in that same range. Range, yeah. It's 76 or 5. Um, 76. So you like her a little less than the other one? Yeah. Because this one, as Randy has said, is stepping in the right stirrup pretty hard. So. But 76 yeah. is not a great score, guys. Come on. Where, where are you judging? 
I know 76 is a pretty good score. 70, 76 would be a winner where I'm judging. Right. That's a bad well, score. This one could be a winner. Yeah, I, I think so. This one could be a winner at wherever they're we're showing. It just all depends. Randy, let me guess 65. She likes that score. No, no, no. I'd have to give this rider because there's such a disconnection with the, and again, we're not putting things down there. She's putting us on the spot by expecting us to put scores in the picture. Which she is, sense. but it's okay. We are grown it's ups. Okay. So I, I'd, I'd give her a 62. Okay. And Laura? I think I give this one a 65 as well. There you go. Look at you. This is Randy. Perfect. Okay, ladies, our hour's up. Oh, my gosh. Really? It is. I'm well, thank you so here. much. And I have things to do, places to go, people to see, and have a great week. Thank and you thank so you much. thank you for having me. Okay. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any new videos coming out. Appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments below. See you next week. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 There you go.